Hey, it's Craig. I just wanted to let you know that you can listen to Canadian History X early and ad-free on Amazon Music, included with Prime. Greetings and welcome to another episode of Canadian History X. If you enjoy the podcast, please consider giving it a rating or review. You can also support the podcast through Patreon by going to patreon.com slash Bairdo. That's B-A-I-R-D-O. The stunt person is a unique career choice. You're routinely putting yourself in harm's way for the delight of others, and it takes a special kind of person to do that. One would say that person has to be mad. Perhaps that is why Ken Carter, arguably Canada's greatest stuntman, was called the Mad Canadian. Born in Montreal in 1938, Carter, who was born Kenneth Gordon Polshek, grew up in a working class neighborhood and with little education dropped out of school to follow his dream. That dream was to perform car stunts, which he did with a variety of teams, before eventually moving on to become a solo act and jumping at race tracks across North America. And for his dangerous stunts, he earned that nickname I mentioned, the Mad Canadian. For two decades, Carter would try and become a household name and achieve the success that Evil Knievel was enjoying. While Carter was known at the time in Canada, he was nearly unknown in the United States. One of the problems was that Knievel was a master of marketing. While he drove around in a huge Mack truck and had all the dazzle he could with his jumps, Carter transported his equipment around in old trucks and school buses. Carter did what he could, jumping a dozen or more cars one night and then doing the same the following night. As he would say in the excellent National Film Board documentary Devil at Your Heels, I'm looking for the ultimate statement. Ken Carter, world's greatest daredevil. Really, that is what it's about. Carter would set a record in 1974 when he took his Chevy car 34 meters through the air, above 13 Subarus. By 1976, Carter had been doing 20 years of car jumps and wanted to do the biggest jump anyone had ever seen. It was his desire to take a rocket-powered Lincoln Continental over the St. Lawrence River, a distance of about one mile. The process would take several years to complete. Beginning in about 1974, he would start looking for sponsors to start building his car that was going to make that jump. You have to have a positive attitude about things, you know, and try to just keep going on. Just don't let these obstacles stand in your way. You know, if you, no matter what it is you want to do, just keep doing it. And that's, to me, is if you fail at that, then you fail. Then you've lied down. You said, I give up. A lot of people run away from their problems, and they don't need to be confronted them when they found another day. So you just got to keep trucking. Try to be... Try to be straight with yourself. You know, this is a fabulous time that we're living in. We can do anything that we want to do. And I mean that, uh, if you work at it hard enough. In 1976, he was able to secure $250,000 to air the stunt on ABC on their Wide World of Sports show. The show would air on September 25th of that year, and it was anticipated a live audience of 100,000 people would watch. To accomplish this jump, Construction began on a 14-foot takeoff ramp on farmland near Morrisburg, Ontario. The most famous stuntman in history, Evil Knievel, came to the site as a special correspondent for ABC and stated that there was little chance of success. I worked on my own project at the Snake River Canyon for nearly three years. They're trying to finish everything up here in just two weeks. The weather has been bad, the runway is muddy, the takeoff ramp is not built. I don't think I'd attempt to try this stunt. I think it's much more dangerous than the Snake River Canyon stunt, and I think that the time and preparation that's been put into it is much too little. This is maybe a daredevil stunt that might end all daredevil stunts. After delays in finishing the car and the ramp occurred, the broadcast date was missed, and ABC withdrew its support. This did not stop Carter from going ahead with his jump. In 1978, jumps were planned, but both were cancelled. On September 26, 1979, three years after the jump was originally supposed to happen, Carter came within five seconds of launching before a mechanical failure caused the jump to be cancelled. By this time, there was no live audience, but the jump was being filmed for release as a film. With so many delays, the film producers thought that Carter had lost his nerve, and they had stunt driver Kenny Powers perform the jump while Carter was in Ottawa. 
The car with powers in it flew 506 feet in the air before breaking apart and falling into the St. Lawrence. Powers would break eight vertebrae, three ribs, and fracture his wrist, and the jump was 4,774 feet short of its target. In order to have successfully launched off the jump, Powers would have had to reach a speed of 280 miles per hour before hitting the crest of the ramp. At that point, it is estimated he would have hit several Gs of force, and the car would have reached an altitude of 300 feet if it succeeded in reaching that speed. Instead, due to the bumps on the ramp, the car reached a speed of only 180 miles per hour. Needless to say, Carter was none too pleased because of the ruse. Powers and Carter had been friends before the jump, and they would continue to be so after. Carter stated he would not give up on the jump, but the ramp would soon fall into disrepair, and the jump would never happen. In total, it is believed the stunt cost a million dollars to accomplish, even though it did not succeed. This is my dream. This is the end of my dream. I don't care if I never jump again, but this I'm going to do. This is my dream. I created it. I built it. I designed it. Nobody ever jumped a car a mile. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I want to do. And that's what I'm going to do. The thing about it is it's, a, it's, it's something that you only dream about. What can I do? Jump 18, 19 cars, 20 cars, go out there and bust more bones? You're right. I'm getting too old but not old enough to do this one. I'll do this one. I won't retire. We can travel around and let the kids... I'll teach the children like the Eagles said, but I'll teach them because they believe in me. This is next. It's the final. It's the ultimate thing. What can you do with a car other than this? No, no. It's my dream. Carter would continue his jumping lifestyle. In 1982, he jumped a car over a two-story building in Lancaster, New York, and he announced that he was going to jump the Niagara Gorge. He would also jump 170 feet from ramp to ramp at the Canadian Association Stock Car Auto Racing event in Ontario, which got him plenty of press. Prior to doing the 2,000 foot jump across the gorge, Carter decided to do a test jump over a pond. On July 1st, 1983, Carter attempted to jump a pond in Peterborough. The jump failed when the ramp collapsed. Carter decided to try the jump again and did so in September. The jump was going to be 200 feet, but the racing of the night went late and Carter was forced to make the jump in the dark with few lights available. Carter would have his team add more fuel to the rocket's tank at the back of the car, as he was afraid he would not be able to clear the ramp. With the extra fuel, the car launched off the ramp with thrust still coming out of the rocket, shooting the car 100 feet into the air before it ended the thrust, causing the car to fall end over end from the sky. The car landed on its roof, killing Carter instantly, as the cage in the car was not designed for this type of impact. The car would travel 295 feet, instead of the planned 200 feet. Harry Shermitt, the assistant manager of the Westgate Speedway, said following the incident, When I reached him, he was not breathing. He had no visible injuries, but clearly it was bad. We needed about 15 to 20 minutes to get him out. And that was the end of Ken Carter, the Mad Canadian. As I mentioned before, there's an excellent documentary you can watch through the National Film Board app on your tablet, TV, wherever, and it's completely free, and it's called Devil at His Heels, and it is fascinating and excellent. Information for this piece comes from Wikipedia, Adirondack Almanac, Bangshift, UPI Archives, My Classic Garage, McLean's, and Devil at Your Heels. If you enjoyed this episode of the podcast, please give it a rating and review. You can also reach me with any questions you have at crwbaird at gmail.com, and you can find hundreds of articles on Canada's history on my website at CanadaX, that's ehx.blogspot.ca.